Okay, so this video is going to be a little different. Um, it's going to be a like a reply or a response to another video. Now, the other video, if you look at the screenshot there, this video um, just came out. It was posted this morning. It's called Dart Dawkins Cool Aid Poison Presup. And it is by a YouTuber. He go his screen name is Lookout for Number One. I will post the link to his channel, and I will also post the link to the video in the description area of this video. But I have, um, you know, uh, exchanged ideas with the with this particular individual. His name is Oscar. Uh, we have worked together on more than one occasion. And um, we've communicated with each other actually for several months on a pretty, you know, fairly regular basis. So this video is going to be, uh, you know, like a, a commentary about his video that he just posted. I'm going to comment about his video, but not only that, I'm going to comment about one of the videos that he used, I'm going to go back to that original video and make some comments about the the original video. So, but first, before I do that, I just want to play a little kudo because uh, he gave me a kudo in the video. It was in the opening of his video. I want to play that right now. Here that is. Okay, so uh, before I actually start with the composition of the video, I have to give a great thanks to Daft Dawkins the bank, uh, because without him, I could not get the clips that I wanted because he's got a massive database um, whereby if I ask him for a particular thing on a particular subject, that Daft Dawkins, he can actually pull it out. That's amazing, so thank you for, uh, for that. Right, so um, I want to get... All right, thank you for that, Oscar. So, uh, so now I want to get to uh, my video, and I I just want to make a, a few comments about Oscar's video. Now, the first thing I want to make a comment about, uh, I'm going to go back to one of the original videos that Oscar used. This was a conversation between Darth Dawkins and Alex Malpass. And I'm going to play part of that clip, okay, or part of that video. First, I will play Oscar's, the part that Oscar used, and then I will go back to the original video. So this, what you're going to see now, is the part Oscar used in that, in his video this morning. Oh, yeah, but also remember the word chance. Would you be able to have rational thought? Um, I don't know. Pro possibly not. Okay, okay, good. So, you see... I, I have a question for Alex once he's... Okay, so, a Alex, this. if every event, including your brain states, were not the product of regularity, but were the, simply the product of chance... Could you be rational? Um, I don't know. Okay, so so why should why should I accept anything you say about the nature of reality as being rational when you're standing on a foundation where you're just assuming that things work a certain way? Okay, so I went back to the original and I listened to a little bit more of that. And here is a little bit more off of the original video. I, I have a question for Alex once he's okay, done. So a Alex, this. if every event, including your brain states, were not the product of regularity, but were the, simply the product of chance, could you be rational? Um, I don't know. Okay, so 
So why should, why should I accept anything you say about the nature of reality as being rational when you're standing on a foundation where you're just assuming that things work a certain way? Okay, now before I make my comment on what he just said, I want to play a clip concerning a couple of things that are related to what you just heard. All right, here are those clips. That you stand upon in order to reason to withhold belief in God. What is the rational justification that there are causal connections? I don't think I can rationally justify this. I think it's something that's just assumed to be true. It's like an axiom. Oh, okay, good. So, so, good. So now you've violated your principle that in order to believe in an absolute that is personal, you require a rational justification. But when it comes to your just adoption... Just something that I just said. Okay, okay. So, so you're violating your own principle when you believe sure. in an impersonal absolute. You don't require rational justification. So you have a double standard and you're inconsistent. So you violate your own principle upon which the foundation you claim to reason. Violating your own principle, sir? To, to some extent, sure. No, either you are or not. Are you violating your own central principle that you employ for atheism? Because I cannot deductively prove that I exist, like independent of any type of observation. Sure, I, I'm violating okay. that, yeah. Okay, so you that But that okay. doesn't get me so to you're at, so, you, so, you're, so your atheism um, is standing on a violation of your own principle of atheism, right? Okay, sure. sure. Okay, good. So then your atheism is irrational. Okay, sure. It's weirding me out there, and you just said... So you're, you're nitpicking, not... Alex. You're nitpicking, well, and not... you're being, in a very sophisticated way, you're being, uh -huh. in, in okay. a sophisticated way, evasive. Now, is there ultimately, so in your view, I don't know what you... since you, right, since you deny the existence of God, right, in order for mm -hmm. you to affirm or deny anything... Mm -hmm. You're going. You're going to have to presuppose that you have reason, and in order for there to be to be reason, you're going to have to have a world where th there is is some continuity. What I want to know is what is it that will be the basis of any continuity? Do you have anything in mind for that? Yeah, I just. I mean, I I have a PhD in philosophy. I've studied a lot of philosophy. I just I don't know what you mean. Right. And that might be my fault. Right. But it also might be that you're not, you know, those words are not clear. You think you, it was clear I think I'm being, being abundant. You see, you want to know okay, something, you think Alex? you're being I clear. Mean, I, I like you, Alex. Don't get me wrong. I'm giving you a hard time, but you should mm -hmm. be able to handle these questions instead of just being so evasive, given that you have a PhD in philosophy and I don't. Sure. What okay, I want to well, know is <laughs> you did. Okay. So what you just heard him say, he was referring to a double standard. And he said that a, well, he said a couple things. He said that a double standard is irrational if you hold to a double standard. And the other thing he said was that that is being inconsistent with your own criteria. He was pointing that out when he was speaking with Destiny. All right. So if you listened closely to Darth, when he was asking Alex that question, Darth was talking about regularity. And when Darth uses that word regularity, he is referring to either physics or continuity. So he was asking Alex about whether or not he thought that the, you know, the his brain states were not the product of regularity, but were simply a product of chance. And Alex replied by saying, I don't know. It's possible. Now, after Alex said it's possible, if Darth were consistent in his own worldview, if he were consistent based on what he has said before, he would have jumped all over Alex for saying it's possible. He would have jumped all over that. Instead, he did a flip-flop. He accepted it. Because if you listen to Darth in other videos, Darth is all over people if they talk about or bring up anything about what is impossible or possible. Here are some clips that you'll hear that. Here are a few examples. 
kind of paraphrase. Yeah, in your worldview, there's nothing identifiable that is ultimate, absolute, um, that will uh, dictate what is, can be, or cannot be. And you don't identify for me what the ultimacy of reality is, then you're going to concede that you do not have a framework. You do not have a canvas upon which to place paint or pigment. You do not have chess pieces to place on a chessboard. If you're going to invoke what is possible or impossible, that requires a framework. Doesn't the ground of all being, um, isn't it the basis of possibility and impossibility? Right? right? Could you, could, could you? Oh, stipulate? yes. No, I agree with that. Yeah. Good. So, so, so would you be able to actually stipulate um, in a way that could be accounted for of what is possible or not possible without knowing what the ground of all being is? No, you, there you go. I agree with you. On good, that. good. What's without the ground? God. What, good. What's, well, okay. So. You don't identify for me what the ultimacy of reality is, then you're going to concede that you do not have a framework. You do not have a canvas upon which to place paint or pigment. You do not have chess pieces to place on a chessboard. If you're going to invoke what is possible or impossible, that requires a framework. Possible. Listen, is it impossible? It's impossible. Is it, is it impossible? No, no, no. Is it impossible for something to come into existence out of nothing. Is that impossible? Yes, that's impossible. I didn't ask you. I asked him. Is that impossible? That is oh, impossible. Come on. Okay, now, explain to, me, that. Don't ex explain, that. explain to me, explain to me, explain to me how you know that that's impossible. Because in order to know what is possible and impossible, you're going to have to know that which is completely and utterly absolute in existence. So what is absolute in existence? The creator, and God. So that was several examples of what Darth typically does when he hears an unbeliever or an atheist use the word possible or impossible. He's all over them. He makes sure to point this out that he'll say something to the effect that from your worldview, you can't identify or delineate what is possible or impossible. But when he was speaking with Alex, Alex said, I don't know, it's possible. And Darth did not say anything. He did not. He did not follow his own script. He wavered and, you know, went off of his script, his typical script. Why did he do that in this case? The reason why he did it is because Alex said it's possible and it was in conformity to Darth's worldview. So Darth wasn't going to challenge that or point that out. He was going to go right along with it, even though he's previously said that a, an unbeliever cannot say what is possible or impossible or, or excuse me, possible. So Darth cherry picks. He sticks his finger in his keister, pulls it out. If it's brown, he goes to the left or north or whatever direction. If it's black, he goes to south or backwards. Whatever he feels is convenient at any given moment, that's what he does. Whatever feels good or sounds good, that's what he does. So he will take the same thing that he previously pointed out to an unbeliever, something that he, uh, he was opposed to, and here, in this particular example, he went right along with it. So you want to talk about inconsistency? What did Dar Again, as a reminder, what did Dar say about being inconsistent? He said that if you're inconsistent, you're irrational. What do we see when we look at Darth Dawkins' worldview? 
And when I'm talking about looking at his worldview, I'm not just talking about looking at one clip. I'm talking about over years of looking at his, his conversations in video after video after video. What do we see in context? Inconsistency. See, Darth Dawkins actually, his thought processes and his psychology, he actually believes that since he's been doing this for 10 years or 12 years, whatever version you're listening to, he believes that that's a strong point. In fact, time is his worst enemy. It's the most damning thing on his agenda. Is weirding me out there, and you just said. So you're you're nitpicking, not, Alex. You're nitpicking, not, and you're being in a very sophisticated way. You're being uh -huh. in, in okay. a sophisticated way evasive. Now, is there ultimately, so in your view, I don't know what you, since you right, since you deny the existence of God, right? In order for mm -hmm. you to affirm or deny anything, mm -hmm. you're going you're going to have to presuppose that you have reason. And in order for there to be to be reason, you're going to have to have a world where the, there is, is some continuity. What I want to know is, what is it that will be the basis of any continuity? Okay, now that was part of the same original video. It was in a different part of the conversation. But there you heard Darth bringing up continuity. And Darth has said many times, continuity is something that is it is something that as a, in according to his worldview everybody knows that there is continuity everybody knows it in fact we cannot think otherwise now that's one version of darth okay that's one version because he, even on this he contradicts himself but for the sake of this video I'm going to go along with that version. Darius has said that everybody knows that this includes both believers and non-believers. They know that there is continuity. Okay, now I'm going to let you listen to a couple other clips related to that. Listen to Darth talking about continuity. In fact, he was asked his own question about continuity. Let's see what he has to say. But first, let me, I'm going to let you listen to a couple other related clips. Here they are. Including the unity and diversity in existence. If you say that God is not needed, then the question is, is, is there actual continuity in existence amongst all of the diversity of particulars? Because without any continuity, right, without regularity and uniformity, you're not going to be able to make sense of things. So either continuity exists, you will identify directly or indirectly that it exists, or you don't. Now, if you do not, if you do not claim that there's continuity, then you have no basis for intelligibility because your very capacity to speak is going to require the precondition of continuity. For any given induction, no, I, whether it's going to be know successful. It, I can know in advance that God has created uh, the world to operate in a regular law-like way. And when I see... Ah, so there you heard Darcy. If a good thing were not good enough, he added that he can know in advance. So not only is it something that is innate knowledge that everybody knows, he can know it in advance. Well, now let's take a look at another conversation Darth had, and he was talking about continuity. And in this particular conversation, for lack of a better word, uh, well, actually, let me take that back because this was earlier when Darth was not so, let me use the word, he was not so well educated. Let me put it that way. So this is a more innocent Darth, perhaps a more honest and truthful Darth. 
That would be the way I would put it. But let's listen to him in this conversation where the atheists, he was with several atheists, and they put his own question to him about continuity. Now remember, Dar said earlier that without claiming continuity, you cannot make sense of things. He also said that it was something that he could know in advance and that everybody knows it. So let's hear how he answers to something that he claims that God has made him know this, and it's something that he cannot be wrong about. And if, it is, if he is wrong, it would be a defeater for his own position, according to himself. Let's listen to how he answers. You believe induction can no, give no, no, you no. answers of certainty. I said that uh, physics is the same everywhere in the universe. Why is that not correct? I didn't say that was not correct. I said you could, can't substantiate that. So it is correct? No. And if it is correct, why should that. I substantiate it? Yeah, if you're okay, not saying when, it's when, correct. Okay, you see, you, see, you see what I'm dealing with here, Dex? I'm dealing here with uh, adults who have the mind of teenagers. Well, do you think that's a correct or incorrect statement? That okay, it is, an it is an unsubstantiated claim that Sydney has made that physics well, is the same think? everywhere. What do you think? Well, what I what I think is that the Christian God exists, and He has revealed Himself, and He has revealed well, that I He has that made it. Okay. Well, I'm at. Well, I, I I don't know that physics physics is the same everywhere in the universe. But what what I Oh, now, wait a minute. Wait. I thought this was something that God has made him to know that he can't be wrong about. I thought it was something that was innate knowledge. I thought it was something that everybody knows. I thought it was something that he could know in advance. And I thought that if he doesn't claim it, he can't make sense of anything or one cannot make sense of things. But yet he said, I don't know. So what happened? Um, Darth Dawkins, you're beautiful. Thank you very much, pal. I appreciate that. Okay, now I'm going to touch on another couple things about the earlier video. Is truth true? Is it absolutely true, Alex, that if something is true, it cannot simultaneously be false? Well, okay. <clears throat> so this was the same conversation with Alex, and you heard Darth, he brought up the term absolutely true. And when he did that, he just contradicted himself again. Why? Okay, listen to this. Yeah, you don't need to add the qualifier of absolute. All you have to do is say reality. Okay, uh, I do. That's an unnecessary qualifier. No, I, I, I. He doesn't have absolute truth, which I agree with. He appeals to reason. I don't. Right? I don't. Listen, I don't use terms like absolute truth. Okay. What, what term do you? No conclusion in science can actually be considered truth it can only be a tentative conclusion so since all conclusions in science are tentative and are not declared to be absolute truth by what means can you as a skeptic determine that anything is true I'll explain to you why it's objectively provable okay. because all of the information okay from that from the world around us and from the history of christianity that is recorded in the new testament that we can know that it is absolutely true. Okay. So the alternative that you just provided, which was, well, then you must believe in these things on faith, uh, implies that I believe necessarily these things, right? So the only thing that I have that you have that Thomas has, as best any of us can know, is the way that we can measure and interact with the world around us is that is that absolute jamie uh if you say absolute and mean not dependent yeah, on something else 
then it's absolutely true. <laughs> When I debated JF, all right, uh, he didn't last too long, and he and he finally he what? How did he describe it? He says he just got BTFO'd on the internet, and he literally fled the interaction like a scared Girl Scout. Well, he said it um, sarcastically, right, to sort of disguise the fact that it was actually true. It was absolutely true. He had nowhere to go. He, he- so the claim, okay, and highlight and boldface that word, the claim was that Dar said he didn't use that term, absolutely true. But of course you heard that he did on several occasions. And so that also qualifies Darth as being a liar. But that cannot be because you know what Dar said? He said he's a theist who doesn't lie. And not only that, his own Bible, his worldview, says that all men are liars. But Darth is a theist who doesn't lie. Of course, we know that Darth Dawkins, if anyone, would never lie to us. Because he's such a fantastically wonderful person. Everybody knows that. Okay, now let me get on to the next point. Well, no, because I think the liar paradox could be true. The liar paradox could be both. For all I know, it's epistemically possible to me that. The okay, liar good. So, if you feel that I'm making some type of contradictory statements or expressing contradictory ideas, then what would be your basis of objection? Okay, same conversation with Alex Malpass, and Alex replied by saying that it could be possible. Darth didn't say anything otherwise. So again, he is inconsistent with his own worldview. And you know what he said about being inconsistent. All right, now let's go to the next point. Is weirding me out there, and you just said. So you're you're nitpicking, Alex. You're nitpicking, and you're being in a very sophisticated way. You're being Uh in in a sophisticated way evasive. Now, is there ultimately, in your view, since you since you deny the existence of God, right? In order for Mm -hmm. you to affirm or deny anything, Mm -hmm. you're going you're going to have to presuppose that you have reason. And in order for there to be to be reason, you're going to have to have a world where the, there is, is some continuity. What I want to know is, what is it that will be the basis of any continuity? Do you have anything in mind for that? Yeah, I just, I mean, I, I have a PhD in philosophy. I've studied a lot of philosophy. I just, I don't know what you mean, right? And that might be my fault, right? But it also might be that you're not, you know, those words are not clear. You think you? I think I'm being a bun. You see, you want to know something? You think you're being? I mean, I I like Alex. Don't get me wrong. I'm giving you a hard time, but you should Mm -hmm. be able to handle these questions instead of just being so evasive. Given that you have a PhD in philosophy and I don't. Sure. What I want to know is you (laughs) did. Now, another thing I'd like to point out is uh, what does Darth Dawkins say to people when they answer some of his questions with? I don't know. You've heard it before. You've heard how he answers that. All right. So here we've got a case where Darth is criticizing Alex for saying, I don't know. Yet on Darth's own issue or what he would term as a foundational issue, this would not be a particular or something peripheral it would be a foundational issue. Dar said the same thing when he was asked his own question. This is the beauty of Dar Dawkins. Now, let's listen to Dar's qualification. We learned that Darth learned everything he learned about philosophy on his own. Fantastic. It's okay, Darth. Hold your chin up. Tall and proud. (laughs) Now, let's listen to what Alex said about his 
education. Let's 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 get a little comparison here. Here here that is. Student, I've never even taken gotten a BA in philosophy. Okay, whatever I know about philosophy, I've learned from reading on myself. And you're playing the dumb card. Yeah, you're playing the dumb card. We're done, Roger. You're a little deceptive, little evasive weasel, and it's disgusting. This is the end of this video, and I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave your comments. And I, I thought about what would be a good way to end this video, and I came up with what I think is a real good way. And I've used this before on some of my vi other videos. Here that is. It is uh, to be insane is to embrace contradictions, right? What do schizophrenics do? Schizophrenics constantly are offering propositions that are ultimately contradictory. And then when you point out the contradictions, they just, it's water off a duck's back.